Hello friends, we are together again with a new video. Today I will show you how to modulate the mandibular first premolar. As always we have the dimensions here, 8.8 .8 for the crown length and 26.4 when you mount, when you make it three times bigger and 14.4 and 3.3 3 times bigger is 43.2 millimeters and we have a 69.6 millimeters overall length of the crown or of the tooth sorry and this is the buccolingual or labiolingual dimension and three times bigger is 22.8 millimeters and this is the mesiodistal dimension it's almost seven millimeters and three times bigger is 21 millimeters so we have a slightly larger tooth in labiolingual dimension and here is our block with the proper dimensions this will be the crown length and this will be the root length and this size will be mesiodistal and this is the labiolingual uh, dimension so as always we are starting with the cervical line but this time the cervical line is not as much curvy as the incisor teeth or canine teeth it's a little bit more flat curve so the cervical line in the approximal areas mesial and distal surfaces are more flat not that deep this will be the mesial surface mesial corner and this is the distal corner i have decided that the distal approximal cervical line curvature is more flat than the mesial as always and I am carving the labial surface now the buccal contour crest is located close to the cervical line And we have a canine like tooth as you know this tooth looks like a mandibular canine but a smaller one and a shorter one we have a really well developed middle labial lobe And this is the mesial cusp slope and the distal cusp slope. Distal cusp slope is longer than the mesial cusp slope and the cusp tip will be located a little bit mesially than the center of the crown. So we are making a shorter cusp slope in the mesial side and a longer cusp slope in the distal side. And the buccal, the mesial and distal contour crests are close to each other. They are almost in the same level, but the distal contour crest is a little bit located cervically than the mesial one, but not too far away from each other. They are close to each other. They are almost at the same level, a little bit located to cervical line in the distal surface. And the mesial 
surface is more straight and convex but in the distal surface we have a little bit concavity in the cervical part I am making the concavity now and a larger contact area in the distal side. The distal contact area is broader than the mesial contact area. And the distal surface is a little bit concave, just close, just next to the cervical line. And typically, all the mandibular posterior teeth will look like a little bit tilted to the lingual side on top of the root so I am tilting the buccal surface lingually now and in the lingual surface we will have a small and non-functional cusp, lingual cusp, and it will become really, really narrow through the lingual surface. So I'm carving the approximal areas to make the lingual surface more and more narrow. And in the cervical part, cervical third, the lingual surface is all concave in these areas. We have a concavity. The lingual contour crest is located in the middle of the cervical and middle of the lingual surface, almost this level. And the lingual cusp is shorter than the labial cusp or buccal cusp, almost one third of the crown length so we can say the lingual in the lingual in the book buccal surface in the buccal part the crown length is three portions but in the lingual side the crown length is two portions so lingual cusp is shorter than the buccal cusp almost equal to the one third of the crown length so I am making a slope here to shorten the lingual cusp the buccal cusp tip is located almost at the center of the root or a little bit buccally than the center of the root. 
I am making two small depressions, developmental grooves on the buccal surface. And when we look at the cusp slopes, the mesial cusp slope is all convex, but we can see a little bit concavity in the at the distal cusp slope here. So this is all convex, and this will be a little bit concave. So I am making the concavity here, as you can see here. So the crown shape is almost done, but I'm leaving some reserve material for final shaping. You see here, convex and concave. And we have a concavity here, but this surface is all convex. And it looks like a little bit leaned, tilted to the lingual side. I did not carve the occlusal surface yet because carving of the occlusal surface is the last thing we should do. Now I am shaping the root and quickly removing the excess material from the root surface. This root is a thin root, especially in the mesiodistal meso dimension. Root is really thin, but buccolingual dimension, root is larger. Root apex should be tilted a little bit distally, as always. And just like the crown, the root will be much more narrower in the at the lingual surface. Sometimes the roots of this mandibular first premolar is very thin at mesiodistal di dimension, and we have deep depressions, especially on the mesial side of the root and sometimes these depressions splits the root in two parts so we can see this tooth with two roots because of the deep depressions and we can say see sometimes very thin roots mesiodistally very thin roots and we call them as ribbon shaped roots. The root sometimes becomes very very thin in mesiodistal dimension so it is like a ribbon. Okay, tilting of the root apex to the distal side now.
cervical line again. The proximal curvature of cervical line, as you can see here, not as deep as the incisor tooth. So the root becomes very thin through the through the lingual surface and yeah, removal of the excess material from the root surface just next to the cervical line. Of course, the root apex is more pointy. Yes, it's better now. refinement of the cervical line one more time Okay, so you can see here the crown becomes narrow and narrow through the lingual surface from buccal through the lingual surface. And in the mesial side, there was a deep depression, deep groove on the root surface. 
and in the digital side not that much deep but we cannot say a groove but we can say a shallow depression in the distal side of the root but here there is a deeper depression we can say it a groove and concavities here so the crown is and the root is almost shaped I can carve the oak lizard surface now So there is a cusp here and the other cusp, the Bukka one is here. Bukka cusp is much more big, it's much stronger than the lingual cusp. Here you will make the tri triangular ridge of the buccal cusp. And here is the marginal ridge in the both sides. And the mesial marginal ridge is more vertical then the distal margin ridge and there is a groove here which is passing the marginal ridge to the lingual surface here and central fossa
Okay. Here you can see the link well count crest is located in the middle of the cusp. Okay. Yes. So, this is how the cusps, equal and lingual cusps, look like. small lingual cusp and bigger buccal cusp I am now making the lingual cusp smaller because it's really non-functional just like a well-developed single yeah this is better now and the lingual contrast is at the same level the lingual cusp tip is at the same level with the lingual border of the root you see lingual cusp tip is located at the lingual border 
of the root so the contour crest is located outer of the lingual border of the root Triangular fossa will make it now. These are the triangular fossa, triangular shape, because they have a triangular shape. We are calling them triangular fossa. And the groove of extension to the lingual surface and 45 degrees vertically located mesial marginal ridge you can see here triangular ridge of a buccal cusp because it has a triangular shape buccal developmental grooves in buccal ridge lingual cusp small and non-functional the groove and the mesial side And we can make some extra grooves here. And last of all, refinement of the cervical line again. And hopefully for the last time.
Okay. I can see some little mistakes all the time when I look. at my carving again and again here is a little brush making the opposite surface clean it's a hard brush I recommend you to have at this kind of brush for the posterior teeth it will be useful for you as well make the surfaces more clean Okay guys, yeah, the zenith point is a little bit distally located than needed, so I am making the last carving and I am finishing it now. Because it seems like it will never end if I do not stop myself. Okay, better now. Okay, guys, here is our mandibula first premolar. It is a food which have really unique characteristics. And carving a mandibular first premolar is not an easy thing, I can say. especially the occlusal surface will be a little bit 
difficult to you so please be careful this tooth is not so easy to carve please pay attention to my warning and submit your homeworks make your best Here is my our mandibular first premolar guys. You can still make some improvements, but in general the morphology of the tooth is something like this. Take care and take it easy see you soon later bye bye